Hello. In our next uh, lesson here, we're going to be talking a little bit um, in regards to the product statistical groups and how dependencies between the statistical groups can be set up within X3. Okay, so the product statistical group starting off, basically it's a tool within the system that enables you to um, establish kind of subcategories um, associated with your products so that you can run sales analysis across these statistical groups. You can run your inventory reports uh, by statistical group. So it can be a very helpful analytical tool within the system. Okay, so to kind of illustrate this concept, I'm in here on my product master file here. And in this case, I have a memory board product up. And now here on the identification tab, you can see that I'm utilizing three different statistical groups, stack group one, two, and three. And it's through these statistical groups that I indicate that this particular product falls under the group of information technology. In group number two, I'm able to specify it as being a component. Then in group number three, I specify it as being having um, in relationship to memory. Okay, so when setting up these statistical groups, many times um, statistical gr uh, one statistical group would be predicated on another uh, element. So, so that is to say, you know, if I initially assign the group of inform information technology to the product, down here in group number two. I want to have a specific subset of group two options from which to choose. Okay, so let's take a look at how that is um, formulated here in X3. Okay, so down under my common data, I'm going to go to product tables, then product statistical groups. Okay, so here are my different statistical group options within the system. So in group number one here, I can see I have my different options from which to choose. And this is a user-defined list that you can establish to make it specific to your industry. Then in group number two here, you'll note that I have another list of codes that fall under this second grouping option. So in this case, we'll see that for group number two, which is miscellaneous table 21, it has a dependency table linked to it, dependency table 20. So if I look over here in the um, left list, I'm currently on miscellaneous table 21, which group two. So the values in group two here are predicated on miscellaneous table 20, which I can see over here is my group one elements. Okay, so in this case, you, we can go down and see, okay, um, you know, stack groups 11 through 19 here, components, computers, printers, and so forth, are all dependent upon the assignment of uh, group or, you know, option 10 in group one, which is again my information technology. Back on stack group two here, my elements um, 20 through 23 here, bike, maintenance, spare parts, are all dependent upon group one being set to option 20, which is for the bike. Okay, so this is where you come to, to define the dependency between your stack groups. And let's kind of go over and take a look at the definition of the miscellaneous tables to show you where you set the dependency upon one table to the next. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. Then under my development menu, under data and parameters, I'm going to come to miscellaneous tables and definition. So over here, here's my group 20 and 21 that I was just looking at. So uh, stack group two 
over here in the dependency section, this is where I list in what my dependent table is. Okay, so options in stack group two are predicated upon the settings that are found in stack group one. Okay, and I can go right down the line. You know, for group three, okay, group stack group three is predicated upon the option chosen in stack group two. So you can kind of just move right down the line if you want to establish those restrictions. So then to kind of see this in action here, if I go back to my product, and I pull up my memory board here again, you'll notice that there's my 10 option for stack group one. I'm gonna come down here to stack group two and you'll see that my options in here are only, you know, the applicable uh, dependency options. So that is to say if I was to come in here and put another option in there that fell outside of that restriction, X3 is going to provide me with an error message saying that, you know, this stack group 2 option of 21 does not depend on 10. Okay? So that is a little bit about the product statistical groups. They're set up and their dependencies. So I hope this uh, video was of help to you. If so, I'd ask you to please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, if you have any questions, you can feel free to inbox me. Thanks a lot.